Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of the Maxi Geek Show. Today is Friday, March 3rd, and this is episode number 51. Uh, after the state of play last week from PlayStation, this week was on the quiet side once again, as is the usual nature of these things, uh, but there were some pretty interesting news stories to talk through nonetheless. Of course, as it's the first episode of the month, we'll go through the games that are coming out, as well as those quote-unquote free games coming to console subscription services. We're going to kick things off, though, with new details about the fourth wave of tracks coming to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe next week. So, as you can see on the screen, the first uh, first wave, the, the fourth wave, uh, the first one of 2023, for the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass has been revealed uh, and is coming out on Friday, uh, uh, Thursday, March 9 or Friday, March 10, depending on where you are in the world. Um, we knew that Yoshi's Island was going to be one of the tracks available to players in this pack and that Birdo would be a new character, uh, but with the information and the new trailer today, we have the full confirmation on the list. Uh, so we do have the trailer here for it and I can put that on later if, if uh, you know we want to. But specifically, we're just going to go through them. So the two cups are the Fruit and the Boomerang Cup. The Fruit Cup uh, features uh, the Amsterdam Drift track from Mario Kart Tour, which is the mobile phone game. Riverside Park, which is one of those rare Game Boy Advance titles, uh, Game Boy Advance game tracks that we're going to get blown up into, into full 3D. DK Summit is coming from the Wii. That's one of those ones where... Um, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, down and then barrel back up to the top and then down again. Uh, not to be confused with Wario Summit, which is like a massive one track all the way down. Uh, and then finally, Yoshi's Island uh, is an all new track, completely, you know, original. Uh, so it's the first time this is being shown off, uh, be appearing in a game at all. In terms of the Boomerang Cup, uh, we have Bangkok Rush, which is another Mario Kart Tour track. Uh, Mario Circuit from the DS entry is making its appearance. Waluigi Stadium from the GameCube. So it's not the Wario Stadium that people keep wanting from the Nintendo 64 release, uh, but Waluigi Stadium is still a very, very good one. As you know, you can see fire in almost every one of these shots. Uh, you know, the fly fireballs, so it's a bit, bit of hazards to get around. And then finally, Singapore Speedway, again coming from Mario Kart Tour. Uh, it is great, you know, we, we have the date for the, the, the content, so it's coming, you know, March 9, March 10, depending on where you are in the world. Um, the only, only real downside to all this is, that again, it's featuring, you know, there's eight tracks, and three of them are from Mario Kart Tour. The, the problem that I have with the Tour tracks is they're just not entertaining, they're not fun, they're confusing layouts. Um, you know, the tracks will, will change direction randomly. Not randomly, but you'll you know you'll turn right as you start the, the lap. You'll come around, then you have to turn left. But then you know on the third lap you'll turn right, then turn you know left and do a U turn, and you know they're never straight tracks. They're always you know making you go in different directions, which has its appeal. There are times when that is that is good, um, but you know and these tracks are always focusing more on you know the the city they're based on rather than actually being anything fun. So. You know, all the original tracks, even the Yoshi's Island will do it as well. They all, you know, you know, they come up with a layout and then they fill it with fun things. Whereas these tour tracks come up with a layout uh, and then have to fill it with, you know, items from that city. I mean, this is technically not even, uh, you know, they're saying Amsterdam. They've got windmills everywhere. It's like, yep, yeah, technically, yes, there are in, in the Netherlands, there are windmills, um, you know, and they have a lot to do with the tulip farms and all that. Um but, you know, they generally are not in Amsterdam City. It would be like putting, you know, the, the stone fences in from the English countryside throughout the London track. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, so that may be something that, you know, most people are okay with. I personally, I don't like it. I think it's a, I think it's a cheap way of, of, of doing these tracks. Um, because these, these already exist. These tour tracks exist in a 3D sense already. Um, but, you know, they're being cut up you know, to, to make these 20 second laps uh, in the game, in the mobile game. So they're not they're not really having to do a lot of work to bring these across to the console, you know, just basically stitching them back together. That being said, uh, I am excited for um, DK Summit. 
Yoshi's Island, I said, looks great. And then Waluigi Stadium from the GameCube, you know, those are some of my favorites out of this list. Um, as I said before, too, Birdo will be a playable character. Um, so if you are looking to, you know, change up who you race as, Birdo will be available. Uh, and much like Yoshi and Shy Guy, there will be nine um, color combinations to choose from. Meaning you'll be able to have, you know, the standard default pink, or you can go blue, red, green, all that sort of stuff. So that's all good for that. Um, we also got confirmation yet again that there will be more characters added in the remaining packs uh, later in the year. Moving away from the cute and cuddly of Mario, we're going to Hell-A because Dead Island 2 dropped a massive gameplay presentation this morning. So Dead Island 2, uh, obviously, you know, the title of the game has been around for many, many, many years, having been in development for a long time. Um, but we now finally have a release date, and that's April 21st. Um, it was pushed back from its end of February release to April 28th. It was given another eight weeks. Um, but with development finished up sooner than expected, so they actually managed to bring the date forward. So now that development is locked down, the date is set in stone, and everyone's happy with it, uh, we're finally going to start seeing some more information coming through about the game, specifically this deep dive here. Now, because obviously this is a very gory game, uh, YouTube by default will not show embedded, uh, you know, mature uh, videos inside, um, you know, embed. You have to go to YouTube to watch it. And I could go there and I could start playing it. Um, but, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, if you want to see something with that nature, you can go do that yourself. Um, I'll pop the, the link in the chat for the game. Get the right link first, that'll help. There we go. Uh, yeah. So specifically, the gameplay itself breaks down um, Danny. Danny is one of the six characters you can choose from at the start of the game. Um, uh, Danny is is you know Irish. She's a fighter. She's willing to do whatever it needs to do to get you know to get out of town, so to speak. Um, they do go into a little bit of the card system. Uh, cards are used as modifiers. Um, obviously, they show off combat weapons. You know some of the very early locations. Um, I can't say much more about the game uh, for reasons that may be, you know, obvious to some people, um, but there will be more information on it soon. So, yeah, if you do want to check it out, I highly suggest you, you know, you do. Um, if you are squeamish, you know, if, if blood or, you know, broken bones, you know, seeing things through the, you know, skin that maybe you, you don't normally see sets you off. Um, I will give you a very, very, very big warning on that because there are some things that are very questionable. So just be aware of that. Um, the game itself, as I said, is coming on April 21st for both PC, uh, Xbox, both consoles, and PlayStation, both consoles. So that's something to look forward to there. Uh, moving away from uh, gory and new, we're going to go back in time somewhat um, because Ubisoft have announced that when Anno 1800 releases later this month, it will be free for the first week. So Anno 1800 is, um, it's been on PC for a number of years now, and it's making the jump to Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 uh, as the X, as the Anno console, Anno 1800 console edition. Um, the best thing about this is it is releasing at a discounted price. So it's coming in at uh, $60 Australian instead of, you know, the usual $90, $100, $110 games that we normally see or we're seeing lately. Um, but when the game releases on the 17th of March, it will actually be available to download for free for the first week. Um, it's the full game. It's not a time demo. It's not, a, you know, you've only got, you know, three chapters to enjoy. It's the entire experience that you'll be able to get in and play through. Uh, once that week is up, the game will lock. You will not be able to boot into it unless you buy it. If you buy it on on the store or you buy uh, the disc version at, console, uh, at retail and pop it into your console, um, or you know from from the digital marketplaces uh, it will unlock the game obviously and you can just pick up where you left off so they do have a bit of a dev diary going in about how the console build works how all the um, the controls and all the bits and pieces have come together for it uh, if you're not aware of what the anno series is it's a city builder so it's very much like sim city city skylines things like that um, they just you know tend to focus on specific you know time periods so it's not about, you know, the modern day, it's about this particular one, it's, you know, the turn of the century, you know, 
turn of the 19th century, that sort of thing. So you're dealing with, you know, sailing ships, you're dealing with, you know, the Industrial Revolution coming and all that sort of stuff. Um, while the game is launching on the 17th on consoles, it is available on PC, you know, today. PC players will also get access to a free week's worth of, a, 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 you know, a gameplay with the game as part of it through the Ubisoft app and Steam. Um, the thing is, again, with that, is that if after the week you haven't bought the game, access will be removed. You will not be able to play it. Uh, so just be aware of that as well. So, but yeah, um, as I said, it is a city builder game. These are some of the screenshots from the, the console version. Um, it will have a lot of the features and content updates that the PC release has already had for a couple of years. It won't have everything. Um, you know, they've, they've been very sort of coy about that it's not going to be able to have everything day one. But, you know, depending, I suppose depending on how this goes, that we might see more come to the game over time. So, yeah, I think it's very, very cool that Ubisoft is doing it. Obviously, they're a little unsure uh, about the, you know, will this game do very well or will it not? Um, as I said, you know, the, the series has been around on PC for, you know, a decade and change. Um, and this is the first time it's coming to consoles. So it has definitely been, uh, you know, something that we haven't seen a lot of before. Uh, so hopefully, you know, this does well for them and they can do more for it in the future. Moving away from, uh, you know, the old world that we know, we're going to talk about a little bit about the old world that is all new and fantastical, uh, and that is about Elden Ring. So during the week, From Software dropped on Twitter uh, that they are working on an expansion for Elden Ring called Shadow of the Erd Tree. Specifically, this piece of art that you're seeing on the screen um, is all that we have for it. Um, we see a girl with long blonde hair on, you know, a horse, bull, whatever that's supposed to be, in a field of wheat with, you know, I'll just say ghost wisps in the air, and then a giant tree in the distance. That is it. We know two things for it. We know that it is in development. So this isn't, hey, we're going to do this. This is, hey, we are doing this. And the second thing is that the uh, expansion will come to all platforms. So that is that includes PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Um, the reason why I'm calling this out is because Cyberpunk released on those consoles, uh, and when they announced their first and only expansion for it, they dropped support for the last generation. Uh, that is not the case here with From Software. They are still supporting it. Um, the news of this comes a few days after they you know, announced that they've sold 20 million copies of the game uh, across the five platforms uh, in the 12 months that the game's been out. So... Again, we, there's really no other information about it other than that, hey, it exists, they're working on it, and it is coming to all the platforms. So that's that's really, there's nothing more we can we can say about it because that's, that's all the information that we have. Uh, speaking of expansions, though, we actually have some more information about, well, we actually have new information about the next expansions for the Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet games. Called The Hidden Treasure of Area Zero, there are two parts to this expansion. Uh, one is going to release later this year. One will release next year. Um, so in terms of uh, the dates for when these are coming out, we don't know. It is highly likely, though, that you know we'll see the first expansion released sometime in maybe late October or November, uh, just because that's usually when Pokemon drop things. Uh, you know, in in you know throughout the year, so that's their usual window. Now, specifically, the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero, the first one, um, will have players... Uh, where is it here? They've, they've called it. So it's called the Teal Mask. So there's two parts to it. There's the Teal Mask and the Indigo Disc. Um, in the Teal Mask, players will uh, take part on a school trip to a new area, the land of Akit... Akit uh, I really should pronounce these things in my head before time. Uh, Kitakami? Uh, you know, they, they just say it's a, where a great mountain towers over the land and the people live at its base. Uh, it's a place of uh, tranquil nature. It's a place of tranquil nature expanses featuring rice paddies and apple orchards. Uh, the trip seems to coincide with a festival regularly held in the village during the season. So the village is bursting with various street vendors and stalls. Players will meet new friends and all that. Hi, Mermaid Wolf. Sloth Lover. <laughs> that is a great name. Um... So, with this one, if you pre-order the expansion, you'll get new outfits for the corresponding version of the game you own. So, Scarlet players will get access to these outfits, uh, and then Violet players will get access to these outfits. 
the one thing that they wanted to make very, very clear, uh, SMR for some of the new uh, characters you'll encounter, uh, and again, new Pokemons, but the one thing they wanted to make very, very clear, um, and I didn't put it in here, is that if you own Pokemon Scarlet now, you have to buy the Scarlet Expansion Pass. Um, you cannot purchase the Violet Expansion Pass. It will not work. You can actually buy the DLC uh, on the eShop. There's no restriction there stopping you, uh, but it is not compatible with the game. Uh, that is, of course, because there are select Pokemon that are only available in the Scarlet game and Scarlet DLC that are not in the Violet game or Violet DLC by default. Um, so you just need to make sure that you do buy the, the exact one for your game type. In terms of, you know, you know what new Pokemon there are, as I said, you know, we had, had some new ones up there. Um, there seems to be a lot of purple in these designs. Whether or not that is connecting into, you know, the teal mask and the indigo disc. Obviously, indigo is a version of purple, teal is a version of blue. Um, we don't know. Um, so the, the second one, the Indian Disc, is coming in next year. There's no time frame on that one at all. We just know that the first one, um, the Teal Disc, will be coming out later this year. Um, it is great that they're doing this. Obviously, a lot of folks are hoping that they will fix some of the issues that are, you know, plaguing the game still. Um, there was an update that was supposed to launch recently um, that should have fixed a number of issues. Um, they, the, the general... Uh, step that they took for most of the areas that were suffering uh, is just to drop the number of Pokemon and you know NPCs in the area um, which may make the game feel a little more barren than, than it really you know needed to be so just be aware of that if you're if you're still playing the game but yeah um, I'm sort of not into Pokemon anymore uh, you know I'm, I'm a child of the Pokemon generation um, but the the series themselves in terms of gameplay is just not evolving enough for me um, and it feels like I'm just retreading the same game every time. Yeah, new locations, new Pokemon, new characters, all that. That's great. Um, but it just feels very much the same. And I just, I can't do it again. So, uh, you know, I'm moving on with it. Uh, speaking of moving on, let's get into our game subscription service updates. Uh, we're going to start off with Xbox, who announced three games coming to play. So back in September, was that was the last month we had Xbox 360 games included. Uh, so we went from four games down to two in October, uh, and then October, November, December, January, and February, uh, we only got two games available as part of Xbox Games with Gold program. Uh, I was very critical of them in reducing, you know, the value of the service, um, you know, because there are a number of people that don't play games online, but they pay their, you know, $80 a year to get their two or three free games a month, so to speak. Um, you know, dropping the number of games that were being offered reduced that value. This month they have reversed that, whether or not it's a permanent, re you know, reverse or if it's just a temporary one, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but there are three games. As always with Xbox, they do things in a weird, in a weird way. We have games that are available for the full length of the month, and then games that become available midway through the month. The two games that are available now and running through to the end of March uh, are Truba Brook. Uh, which is a sort of a single-player sci-fi mystery game, uh, and then Sudden Strike 4 Complete Collection, and that's a World War II RTS. Both these games are available now, and you can download them at any point up until the end of March 31st. Come April 1st, these two titles will be replaced by other, another game. Uh, Lamentium um, is a you know, pixely art-style game, uh, that will be available starting on March 16th. So the way that Xbox do it is they do one game that is available from the first date of the month to the last date of the month, and another game that starts in the middle of the month and runs to the middle of next month. So currently right now, one of the two games from the February lineup is still available. Uh, I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. Um, if I had to plan this out properly, I had that name uh, available. Um, but yeah, so what they've done is, uh, you know, just added a second game for the full month. Um, it's good news if you're, you know, into RTSs or you're into, you know, sci-fi mysteries. Um, if neither of those two games appeals to you, this probably won't make much of a, di much of a difference, but it's, it's great to see them finally adding a bit more value to it. Moving away from Xbox, we're going to jump to the world of Nintendo uh, because today they, f they announced the first game coming to their newly added uh, NSO platforms, the Game Boy Advance. 
Specifically, that Metroid Fusion, which is the fourth title in the main Metroid storyline, uh, is coming next week. Uh, this is also coming on March 9 slash March 10, so depending on where you are in the world, uh, it could be a very early March 9, it could be a very late March 9, or a very early March 10. Um, what is interesting about this is once this game is available, because the Game Boy uh, launched with Metroid 2, uh, which did get a 3DS remake a number of years ago, um, the Switch will now be the only console where all five mainline uh, Metroid games are available to play. So, uh, in terms of the game, you know, it is a 2D side scroller, very much like Super Metroid from the SNES. Um, you know, I, I played through this, you know, 18 months ago, loved it as, as I did when it first came out on the Game Boy Advance. Um, Nintendo Switch Online members can get Metroid, Metroid 2, so Metroid for the NES, Metroid 2 for the Game Boy, and Super Metroid for the Super Nintendo as part of the base level uh, tier. Um, Metroid Fusion is GBA, which means you need the expansion pack. And then obviously Metroid Dread released, you know, 18 months ago um, for Switch. So Metroid, the first one is Metroid 1, Metroid 2 is Metroid 2, Super Metroid is Metroid 3, Fusion is 4, and Dread is 5. This is the, you know, the entire main story arc of the Metroid series. Um, so yeah, this is the first time that all five games will be, will be playable on a single platform. Um, we got somewhat close with the Wii U when they added Game Boy Advance games, uh, but Metroid 2, The Return of Samus, that was not available there. They didn't do Game Boy, they just did Game Boy Advance. Um, so yeah, the fact that, you know, we, we have all these things sorted is very, very cool. Um, but it's, it's kind of interesting that, you know, we also have now Metroid Prime Remastered. So in terms of games we're missing on the Switch, it is Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, and Prime Hunters DS. So Metroid Prime Hunters DS, from the DS, I should say. Um, so there are literally only three games in the Metroid series. Oh, four games. There's the, the three that I've mentioned, and also Metroid Other M, which Team Ninja developed um, for the Wii. So there are four games missing, and then once Fusion avail is available, there'll be five games there. So, you know, more than 50% of the library will be available on Switch, and all five main uh, series entries will be there for the first time. Which I think is very, very cool. Um, if only because now it's possible to play through the entire saga from, you know, the first game in the series to, to the last game. And when I say saga, I mean the actual main storyline. So Prime takes place um, uh, after Super Metroid, uh, but before Fusion. So it sort of slots in there in the timeline. Moving away from Nintendo, though, we're going to jump into PlayStation and talk about their games of coming to PlayStation Plus Essentials. So these were announced during the State of Play last week, and I didn't go into them last week because, again, we keep them for the first show of the month. Um, but there are three really big games coming this month. Um, these will be available starting usually around 7 p.m. Uh, on the first Tuesday of the month, which is this uh, coming Tuesday, the 7th of March. Um, the lineup includes Battlefield 2042 for both PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4, Minecraft Dungeons, just for PlayStation 4, and Code Vein for PlayStation 4. So, obviously, Battlefield is a multiplayer-only title, um, so, you know, there's no campaign, there's no story to, to play through this one. It's just, a, a, a you know, maps and, and, and players. Um, they've just kicked off, kicked off their fourth season called Eleventh Hour, which brings in new, a new character, uh, you know, updated maps, uh, you know, new weapons, all that sort of stuff. Minecraft Dungeons... Um, this is it will run on your playstation 5 let me clarify that point um but it is you know not optimized for it so it's not going to look any better than it does if you just boot it up on a ps4 uh, but this is a dungeon style crawler that is you know co-op uh, it also supports crossplay. so if you have a friend who has it on xbox pc or switch and you're just now picking it up on your playstation uh, you can all still play together um the the levels randomly generate when you go into them uh, so there's a lot of replayability because that's Minecraft. Uh, and then Code Vein is a... I'll just call it an anime Dark Souls. Um, so there's a lot of Dark Souls type uh, you know, um, action in the game. In the, you know that sort of genre of gameplay. Uh, but then obviously there's you know the anime storyline with character and all that going across it. So it is actually a pretty good month. Uh, PlayStation have done pretty well so far this year. You know they're sort of three for three in terms of months with have which have some really interesting games to enjoy. Um, not necessarily, 
you know, games that everyone will enjoy, um, but better than what Xbox have been doing so far this year. The Xbox have sort of redeemed themselves with just adding a third game, uh, you know, this this month, but the overall game selection is a little little weird. They, they seem to be all indie games this year so far. There's not really any big titles to it. Uh, moving away from that, we're going to go through the games that are available uh, across the month of March. So this is something we do, obviously, uh, every every first episode of the month, uh, as we'll go through all the games coming out. Now, obviously, you know, we're a couple of days into the month, so some of these games have already released, um, but we'll just go through the full list. So March 1st saw the release of Brock the Investigator. So not Investigation, you know, Investigator, but Investigator as in an alligator. Um, this is a point and click adventure game, but is also a side scrolling beat em up in the vein of Double Dragon and Streets of Rage. Um, this has been out on PC for a number of years. This is just the console release uh, and it's coming to Switch, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Uh, yesterday saw the release uh, it was just announced just a few days beforehand of Fitness Boxing Fist of the North Star for Switch. Um, this is the Fitness Boxing uh, game that we, there's been two of already on Switch. This is just the Fist of the North Star themed version of it. Um, make of that whatever you will. Uh, released today was Void Terrarium 2 from Niz America. Uh, this came to Switch and PlayStation 4. Also released today was Wolong Fallen Dynasty from Team Ninja and Koei Tecmo. Uh, this came to everything but Switch. Uh, it, it did launch into Xbox Game Pass as well. So if you are looking for something there, uh, you know, to, to download for the weekend, uh, this is a brand new game available to you. Right, moving on to the games that are still to come out. Uh, Project Zero Mask of the Lunar Eclipse is coming out on March 9 for all platforms. Um, this is obviously a weird one because Nintendo co-developed and financed this game. Um, what is also quite interesting about it is it was originally like a Wii exclusive title that never released outside of Japan. So this is the first time it's getting, you know, an international release. Uh, it's also jumping from, you know, the Nintendo family of systems to all platforms. Um, this isn't the first time Koei Tecmo have done this. They, they did this with, you know, um, one of the other games a couple of years ago. I can't think of what it was called now. Um, if you're confused as to why this is called Project Zero and not Fatal Frame, Fatal Frame is the American title, which kind of lines more up with the gameplay mechanic of taking photos of ghosts to sort of defeat them. Um, for some reason here in Australia and in Europe, uh, it's called Project Zero. That lines up with the actual Japanese name, but the American name lines up more with the, the gameplay. Uh, also coming on March 9 to Switch will be Ib. Uh, this game is an indie da title already available on PC just getting a switch port on that date an interesting one uh, on the 9th we'll also see the release of paranormal site the seven mysteries of honjo for both switch and mobile devices um, this one is quite interesting let me throw the uh, the trailer up it's a very short one this is a uh, like a visual novel style um, horror detective game um, this was actually revealed in the Nintendo Direct in Japan, but it wasn't included outside of Japan, so the American, Australian, and European Directs didn't have it, uh, but Square Enix confirmed it like an hour later that it is coming. Um, so the big thing with this, obviously, is that, you know, you're investigating, uh, you know, these mysteries, uh, but each of the people that you are investigating have abilities uh, that are not quite uh, what you would expect them to have, um, which is, you know a wrench in your investigation process we'll put it that way uh the ninth will also see the release of monster energy supercross 6 the full title of the game is monster energy ama supercross 6 championship the official video game uh that is an unnecessarily long title so we'll do we just shorten it to monster energy supercross 6 uh this is coming from milestone uh, llc they are the folks that do the moto gp games they do ride um there was another one they, they do as well. I can't think what it is off the top of my head. Um, basically, they just live in the world of motorbikes. Um, this is the first of what will be like three games from them this year. Um, they also did Hot Wheels Unleashed a couple of years ago. So they're the, the, the devs for that. Um, this game is coming to everything but Switch. But the other games in the series were on Switch. Uh, maybe missing a few features, but they are there if you do want to look them up. The day after, so next Friday, uh, we'll see the release of Mato Anomalies 
from uh, Prime Matter, uh, their publisher of games, um, that is coming to all platforms next Friday. As I said, Anno 1800 console edition is coming to Xbox Series XS and PlayStation 5 on the 16th. Um, this will also, of course, be free for the first week, so you'll be able to download the full game and enjoy it from start to finish. Also on the 16th, we'll see the release of the PlayStation VR 2 exclusive title, The Dark Pictures Switchback VR. Um, this is a sub-series title from the Dark Pictures anthology, which wrapped up last year, um, which you can buy those games from Bandai Namco uh, in, a, in a bundle, get all four of them in one. Um, this is a VR exclusive game. Uh, no word if this is going to jump to any other VR platforms or PC, uh, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. The day after that, on the 17th, so two weeks from now, we will see the release of Bayonetta Origins, Cerisa and the Lost Demon for Switch. Um, this is the origin game for uh, Cerisa, who eventually becomes Bayonetta, that we know from the three games. Um, it features a very different, unique art style compared to the, the mainline titles, and it also features, you know, gameplay that is vastly different as well. Also on the 17th, we'll see the full release of WWE 2K23 from 2K and developer Visual Concepts. Uh, this is coming to everything but Switch. If you do pre-order the um, Icon Edition or the Digital Deluxe Edition, or the Deluxe Edition I think it's called, um, you will get access on the 14th of March. Uh, EB Games are the only retailer in Australia that are stocking the Deluxe Edition on disc. So if you do order that at, in stores, in do order that at EB, you'll get that on the 14th. But the Standard Edition and the Cross-Gen Bundle will be available on the 17th only. Um, there's a lot more coming to that than they've revealed so far, so look for more information on that next week. On the 21st, we'll see the release of Remnant from the Ashes come to Switch. Uh, this game released on PC four years ago, maybe five years ago now. Um, it did eventually come to other consoles, it's now coming to Switch. It is a co-op multiplayer um, you know, shooter game from the folks that did uh, the first three Darksiders. Uh, so, you know, if, if that sort of visual style or gameplay sort of hook uh, interest you be sure to check that one out it is available on other platforms as well uh, on the 21st we'll see the release of chia uh, for pc playstation 4 and playstation 5 um, it's been in development for a number of years uh, by uh, aqueb um, it is uh, also launching into playstation plus premium which is the uh, you know the sorry playstation plus extra and premium uh, which is the one that comes with the game catalog which is much like xbox game pass um, so this will be a day one addition to that platform um it's you know they they were very thanks really i appreciate that um they were very uh you know mysterious on what you were doing in this game a lot of it was just exploring you know the island of or an island inspired by new caledonia um however the, the recent story trailer uh, that, that is linked here um reveals there is actually a bit more going on to to the the game than just what we've seen before the 22nd, we'll see the release of Have a Nice Death for Switch and PC. The game is currently on PC in early access. Uh, it will get its 1.0 release on that date, and Switch owners will get the full release then as well. Uh, on the 23rd, Switch and PC players, running theme in these indie games, Switch and PC players will get the release of Storyteller from Annapurna Interactive. Um, this is all done by one single developer. Uh, it's just being published by Annapurna. Uh, on the 23rd, I'm missing the date from there, uh, The Legend of Heroes Trials of Azul will be available for Switch, PC, and PlayStation 4. Um, this is already out in some parts of the world. Um, Niz America do a staggered release thing, usually over a couple of weeks. Um, you know, just for whatever reason they do it because they're a very small unit, I suppose. What is interesting about this one is this game was never released in English before. And then a number of years ago, uh, a, a group of fans got together and they translated all the text. Um, Niz America saw the work they did and they approached them and said, hey, we want to use this as the basis for our official translation. Uh, and that's how it came to be. So uh, the game started out as a fan translation. Uh, it did get a mod release for PC to make it a fan translation there. Um, but they're actually now bringing it to consoles as well and a full proper release on PC. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that series, that is there. There is a new one on its way as well. So that series has a lot going on at the moment. Uh, the 24th, we'll see the release of Atelier Riser 3, Alchemist and the End and the Secret Key. Sorry, Alchemist of the End and the Secret Key uh, for Switch, PC and PlayStation consoles. Um, I got to play this recently. Uh, I have a preview up on the site. Uh, 
it has one very 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 big change that is apparently not in other games uh, and that is that you can auto complete the alchemy portions of the game um so if you're like me and the alchemy is a bit confusing you can actually just press and hold a button down and it'll auto fill a bunch of uh, ingredients for you to make the item that you're trying to make which I, which is very very cool the 24th we'll see the release of ea sports pga tour for pc xbox series x and s and playstation 5 uh, this is the first uh, EA, ea sports made golf game since roy mcelroy uh eight years ago now maybe nine years ago um this one's been in development for a number of years even during covid they were still going out walking golf greens uh using low flights in helicopters with advanced lidar technology to scan you know the the courses um making sure they picked up uh the elevation changes so you know if if you know the middle of the fairway was two inches higher than the outsides of the fairway uh that was replicated in in you know the the build of the the course in the game the other thing too with this one is that the they have a system called pure strike um where you can actually add essentially buffs to your uh you know character so if you have a driver you can have a pure strike uh, buff for the driver which maybe puts a bit more spin on the game uh, spin on the game spin on the ball um you know for forward or backward uh, maybe it reduces the amount of drag in the air so you know it's a little less impacted by wind uh, depending on those and obviously how you swing you can have some really really interesting things uh, what they did as well is they made sure um, to to replicate uh, things so with the Augusta National Course in Georgia um, the technology that the green the greens the groundskeepers use in terms of maintaining the the actual courses thank you for the follow appreciate that um, yeah, so with all the, um, you know, the, where the trees are, what plants are where, all the bits and pieces, uh, they made sure to, uh, you know, accurately recreate those exact things. So um, they even went so far as to ensure that, you know, the digital plants, uh, you know, look exactly like the real world ones so that it is, you know, and a very authentic uh, experience. There is also uh, weekly and daily challenges. There are tournaments that you can take part in. It doesn't have any of the free, the uh, free, the fun game modes that say the Tiger Woods series had a number of years ago with like disc golf and things like that. Um, but you know there are like sixteen player tournaments that you can take part in, uh, should you choose to. Uh, and there's you know more courses coming post launch. There's 30, 32? I did ha I did have a count um, from the preview that I was at uh, uh, last month. But there's a bunch of them, uh, you know, coming day one. A bunch more coming as DLC. Uh, also on the 24th, because, you know, the, the day wasn't busy enough, Resident Evil 4 Remake will release uh, for PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X or S. Um, let me just re re clarify that point. This game is coming to PC, both PlayStation consoles, and Xbox Series X and S only. There is no Xbox One version. Um, there is a demo coming out for this uh, sometime before launch, uh, but I'll get to that in a moment. Um... In terms of gameplay, the trailer that's there uh, shows off more of the action stuff. Everything sort of pre then was, you know, building up tension. Um, this is, you know, like a 98% faithful remake of the original GameCube title. Um, obviously, they've made some more modern changes here and there. So it's not exact. It's not a one-to-one. -one, uh, but I'm looking forward to playing it. The four, Resident Evil 4 is my favorite game in the series. Uh, the 28th, we'll see the release of Crime Boss Rock A City, which was debuted, debuted, which was revealed at the Game Awards last year. Uh, you know, features uh, Michael Madsen, Chuck Norris, Vanilla Ice, Michael Rooker, Kim Basinger. Um, I've forgotten his name. The the guy right there. Um, uh, Danny Trejo's in it as well. The gameplay for this one is very similar to Payday. Um, so those who were maybe misled by the trailer thinking it was going to be more like Grand Theft Auto, um, that is not the case. It is more like Payday, where you go into a set location uh, and there is a, you know, a mission, you know, it's like the heist missions, I suppose, from, from GTA, uh, if you're familiar with the, those from GTA 5, um, but yeah, so it's very much more like Payday than it is an open world, uh, game. Uh, also on the 28th, we'll see the release of The Last of Us Part 1 for PC, uh, obviously this is the same game that released on PlayStation 5 last October, um, it was due to release very early this month, it was supposed to be out today actually, uh, they just delayed it a few extra weeks just to give them a bit more time to polish it. 
The 28th, we'll see the release of MLB The Show 23 for Switch, Xbox platforms, and PlayStation platforms. Um, this will never not be funny because this is this is a game made by a PlayStation studio and published by PlayStation for Nintendo and Xbox uh, Microsoft platforms. Um, if you are if you have an Xbox and you're interested in this, this game will launch day and date into Game Pass. So Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S will get uh, this in Game Pass on release day. PlayStation fans will need to buy it, and same with Switch. Um, the uh, Gamesman, one of the local, you know, uh, the longest running local games retailer, like specifically games retailer, um, they are importing physical copies of this game from the US for all platforms. So if you do want uh, the game on disc or on cart for Switch owners, um, they are the ones to do it if you don't want to have to worry about you know, getting it shipped in from America. Uh, finally, I say finally, there's probably one more after this. Dredge will be released on March 30. Uh, it is developed uh, by Black Salt Games over in New Zealand and being published by Team 17. Um, this is coming to all platforms, so Switch, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. The big thing with this one is um, as you you arrive in this small little coastal community, um, you're the new fisherman, and you make your living by going out and fishing, selling your fish for money, repairing the boat, upgrading all the bits and pieces you need to do to do that. Um, the catch is that the more you stay out on the water, the more things become a little surreal. Um, so, you know, when the sun goes down, the world becomes a little more spooky. Uh, and uh, if you haven't, you know, gone back and slept, if you've been up for a few days, um, there's like a giant eye in the middle of the screen at the top and you get bloodshot and everything, uh, and there'll be, you know, giant sea monsters that'll appear, or, you know, other hazards. Um, when you venture out into other parts of the world, if you're not quite, you know, uh, ready to explore the world, you know, there might be fog everywhere, so you can't see what's around. Um, there is a story for it and everything. Uh, that's sort of a general gist of it, but it is there. See, I knew there was another game. Uh, the Great War Western Front is coming on the 30th from Frontier Foundry and Petroglyph Games. Um, Petroglyph Games, they're the folks that remastered Command & Conquer uh, a couple of years ago for EA. Uh, that's because they're also the studio that made Command & Conquer for a number of years. When EA shuttered um, uh, Redwood Studios, or Westwood Studios, I should say, um, they basically reformed as Petroglyph Games. So it's almost the same same basic core studio, uh, you know, with new, new, new staff, uh, still making RTS games because that's what they know. This one, um, there's actually two prongs to it. Um, there is, uh, there's the you know the the field commander sort of things uh, where you're you know saying where you want trenches to go and all the other bits and pieces that go along with it, and then um, you know where your trenches go depends on how successful you might be in battle. Then there's the theater commander. So there's you know, the, the squad commander, the ground commander, and the theater commander is the guy who says, okay, I need squads in this part of the country. I need that. And that's the sort of map we're seeing there. So this is the ground commander. So this is where you're saying, I want trenches. I want gun emplacements, right? I want you to flank. This is the theater commander where you're telling, you know, 10 squads of soldiers go to this point. So where if you send squads, so if I would just pause it here. So if, for example, you were to send a whole bunch of squads to this end of the, uh, the battlefield because there was an offense on this side, offensive, I should say, um, that means you may not have enough over here to stop any, any uh, you know, the opposing enemy coming through. So if you jump into the, um, you know, the commander mode for the battlefield, instead of there being, you know, 40 soldiers at your command, there might only be 10. So the choices that you make in both the, the the, uh, the theater view and the ground view uh, will impact both. So you have to sort of keep balancing both aspects at all times. Um, also on the 30th was uh, will be Ravenbound for PC. Um, this is, uh, I will say it's kind of a Souls-like title. Um, it's not exactly Souls-like, but it's probably more closely related to that than anything else. Uh, the developer for this is called S Systemic Reactions. Mr. Tam, thank you. Um, so Systemic Reactions is actually an uh, Avalanche Studios uh, studio. Um, so they're actually, Avalanche Studios were there and these guys said, hey, we want to sort of come together to make our own game. So they got spun up into their own uh, little studio. So this is set, uh, it's, sorry, it's not set, it uses Scandinavian folklore. 
So there's a lot of, you know, Witcher, Witcher type creatures that you'll see, because um, it's that same area. So it's not 100%, you know, everything from the Witcher, because that's still, you know, evolved everything into its own style, but the sort of base is the same. Uh, again, that's only for PC at the moment, but you may make the consoles in the future. That is the last sort of game for the month. Of course, you know, I say this all the time, um, but those are sort of the big games. There are obviously more games coming out than, than we cover in this list. Hello, Mr. Tam. Um, there are more, uh, you know, games that will release randomly. Uh, you know, DLC, obviously, you know, we've got the Mario Kart um, DLC coming, uh, you know, next week. We've got a bunch of free games coming across the next, you know, this week and next week. So that's all, all sort of, you know, keeps generating things as part of the the you know the release schedule so we only put in the sort of the, the really big games or the really interesting games in this list so it's not a complete list by any stretch of the imagination uh, there's also games that you know have released on other platforms maybe you know, a game released on xbox last year it's coming to playstation this month uh, we don't include those um you know just because it's the you know the, the game's already had its moment in in in, in my mind uh, before we sign off though, I do want to highlight something that we have on the site. It's our events calendar. Um, now this is not Maxi Geek events, we're not hosting anything, there's no free swag to get from these events. Uh, but rather these are um, events that are coming up from developers and publishers. So tomorrow morning at 6am Australian Eastern Daylight Time, so 6am uh, Sydney time, uh, there will be a Sims 4 stream where they're going to uh, reveal the gameplay for the new expansion. Um, so they'll deep dive into that, do whatever they need to do for that one. On the 7th, which is this coming Tuesday at 4am, there will be a Paradox show. So Paradox Interactive uh, do a bunch of sort of mainly computer games, uh, but they do do a few Xbox games. Um, Paradox is the, the publisher of the City Skyline series, for example. Um, so they'll have a few announcements in there, you know, new content for existing games, all that sort of stuff. The reason why I wanted to highlight this is next Friday, there are four events now. So Nacon Connect is going to kickstart the day at 6 a.m. Um, that is where we're going to see new information on Gollum. Or sorry, the Lord of the Rings Gollum. Um, we'll also see um, oh, what's, there's, there's a name for it. Uh, the 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 bone white guy here. There's like a like a mortuary, you know, uh, simulator. Uh, we'll also get uh, new gameplay for the Robocop game that's coming out as well. At nine o'clock will be the Mario. Super Mario Brothers movie direct where we'll get the final trailer. Um, that movie is is launching in like four weeks, so we shouldn't have to wait. You know, shouldn't be any more uh, after this. Um, that starts at nine. At nine ten will be the Capcom Spotlight event. Um, now they've said that from nine ten to nine thirty. Again, these times are all in Sydney times. If you click into the event, you'll get uh, the full time zone breakdown for Australia and New Zealand. And if you're from other parts in the world, you'll be able to download um, the calendar. Uh, you'll be able to add it to your uh, Google Calendar or your iPhone calendar. So there, there, you can just click on that. It'll download to your uh, you know, calendar of choice. Um, the Capcom one, the first 20 minutes are what they're calling the pre-show. So the full event starts at 9.30. But basically, the Mario movie direct ends and then the Capcom one kicks in. With the Capcom Spotlight, um, they've said there'll be looks for Resident Evil 4, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, um, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, and there was another one. I've forgotten it now. Um, oh, Monster Hunter. So it is highly likely that this this, uh, this direct, this spotlight event will be where the demo for Resident Evil 4 releases. So we, we learned there was a demo coming last week at the PlayStation's State of Play. Uh, next week at Capcom Spotlight is likely when they'll say, and it's available after the show, uh, which will give it two weeks. So it'll be two weeks between when this event happens and when the game releases. Um, Capcom aren't known for having a lot of surprises, so if they've said this is the, you know, this, there's four games at the moment uh, in there, that's probably all we will we'll get for it, but it's just something to be aware of, because they do occasionally do, do things, um, but we'll just have to wait and see. Um, so again, so... Day kicks off at 6 a.m. with Nacon. 9 o'clock is Mario. 9.10 is Capcom. Then at 10 p.m. that night is Level 5. Level 5, um, it's called Vision 2023. They do this every couple, every year or so. Haven't done it for a few years now because they've been sort of, you know, rebuilding themselves. Um, we'll get new looks at Deca Police, which was just announced during the recent Nintendo Direct. That is coming to PlayStation 4, 5, and Switch. 
Uh, Fantasy Life I, The Girl Who Steals Time, which is a Switch game. Uh, we'll also get a look at um, Professor Layton and new, the New World of Steam. Something like that. That's a Switch exclusive. Uh, Inazuma 11, which has been, you know, in development for almost 11 years. Not quite, it's been like six years, but it's on its way. Um, that is getting a new look next week as well. Uh, and then their giant mech game, uh, which the name eludes me right now, um, that'll be shown off as well. Um, it's highly unlikely they'll have any, you know, surprise events, surprise reveals, because, you know, they just announced three things. Um, Megaton Musashi W is the full, time, full name of that mech game. Um, so, yeah, so it's unlikely they'll have any big reveals in the event, but it is possible. But yeah, so I just wanted to highlight that again, just mostly because next Friday there are four events. Obviously, one of them is a movie trailer reveal, uh, which, you know, you probably don't have to worry too much about that. That'll be on every platform, you know, it can be once it's officially available to, to view. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to highlight because, you know, usually, you know, we might have one or two events on some days, but the fact that there's four on one day now is kind of, kind of insane. Uh, but that does bring us to the end of another show. Um, we do these live at 7 o'clock every Friday, um, which means we'll be back next Friday going through over whatever, whatever the news of the week happens to be. And as there are three major showcases before that show, uh, you know, and obviously level five afterwards, expect there to be a bit, bit of a longer runtime for it. Uh, we will be back on Tuesday for the next episode of our Splinter Cell series. Uh, we're finally making some good progress in that. Uh, we'll aim to keep that going as we progress through to the end of the second game. Uh, again, those things start at 7 o'clock. Uh, and then, yes, Mr. Tam, uh, Mr. Tam, it is a very big week of showcases. Um, and of course, there will be th there's some that you know I'm not including because they're you know more focused on, say, Japan or you know Northern Europe. Um, so these are sort of the big global ones. Uh, but yeah, so uh, next week, a Splinter Cell on Tuesday, starting at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and then the Max Geek Show will be back on Friday going through the news of the week. Again, as it will be a very packed week with all the showcases, uh, we might have a bit of a longer show than normal. As I said, that is us done for the day. Uh, if you do uh, enjoy, do give us a follow. Uh, all the social stuff is down below. Uh, we will have this video up on YouTube as well with all the links uh, for both all the stories we've shown off and obviously the calendar uh, both in there and in the Twitch VOD when that is uh, saved. Otherwise, we'll catch you when we're online next time. But until then, happy gaming.